Hi, I'm Rick Kastner with Sonoran Desert Institute, and in this video, we're going to be doing a light cleaning on the on the internals of this revolver, which we disassembled in a previous video, and we will link below or somewhere in this post. Um, we're going to be doing, like I said, a light a light cleaning, and we're also going to be reassembling this firearm and returning it to the the uh, owner. So. Before we get started, uh, one thing that I failed to mention the last time in the disassembly is how to remove the yoke and the cylinder. So to, to do that, you would open up the, open the cylinder and you would actually pull the, the yoke to the front, like so, that'll come out. And then the cylinder is one piece with the ejector rod. This front screw right here which is on this side plate. Uh, it has this pointed end. And you can probably see that up against the table, but it has a pointed end and that's what actually rides in this groove of the yoke and retains that. So now we'll be cleaning the firearm and the products that we're using are actually the products you'll receive as a student. Um, in, in some of our earlier courses. And they're Mar the Martin Spar Modern Spartan Systems um, cleaning system. So we have here a carbon destroyer, so that's your regular solvent. Copper and lead, that's really, really important when you're cleaning the bore uh, to, uh, to remove any of that stubborn copper or lead that you'll get there and then a nice light oil that you'll want to oil all your components with um, to prevent rust. This right here, uh, this is their complete system, their complete cleaning system. Um, but this right here is their uh, lens cleaner for your, for your optics. And, uh, and then they have some grease as well. So in some systems like the AR platform or any of those high um, high movement, high velocity parts, you'll want to use a, a grease. Okay, so we're not gonna disassemble this firearm any more than we have. We can see enough of it to give it a, a pretty decent cleaning. Um, if you feel confident, you definitely can tear this gun down further and get all the components out of there and give it a, a, a deeper cleaning. But today we're just gonna, we see enough to, to get it, get some Q-tips in there and use the, uh, the regular carbon destroyer from the modern Spartan uh, system to just clean it up. So while I, I'm gonna pause cleaning really quick and point out some of the areas of why I'm, what I'm cleaning. Um, you'll see here we have, it looks like some old grease or lacquer or some sort it might have been the old packing grease that comes with the with the firearm if this if this uh, side plate had never been opened before you'll still have the old packing grease that the firearm came in that has hardened over time almost turned into a tar so we're wanting to clean that up with this being a revolver you don't get a whole bunch of uh, carbon from the the round that would from the explosion of the cartridge that would be more on the breech of the the barrel inside the bore you would look at the the crown of the gun um, but yeah so mainly we're just cleaning up old packing grease okay so you guys will remember uh, from an earlier video we talked about the Otis uh, cleaning kit that you'll that you'll receive in one of the uh, earlier courses. Um, I'm here, I'm gonna be, I have some stubborn grease, some stubborn carbon buildup that I wanna get off. So I'm actually gonna be using the brass scraper that I have here. Maybe some more detailed scrapers that come in that kit. And then later I'll be using bronze brushes to go through the bore um, to scrape all that away. So this, this firearm, if we were to leave it the 
leave this grease on there. It wouldn't cause too much, but eventually cause too many problems, but eventually it may cause some some issues with uh, with uh, components binding up. It depends on also how a, a, an owner takes care of their firearm. If they're in a greasy or, or they're, if this is just what they call a truck gun and they're just throwing it in their back seat and it's a lot of dirt and grime, it would adhere to those tacky parts, those, the grease, and you would have more risk of parts binding up. Um, so we're just trying to prevent, this is all about preventive maintenance, um, getting that packing grease out of there. A lot of people will not take their guns down after they buy them. And it's very important to get that, that packing grease out of there. In military surplus firearms, you also have what they call Cosmoline, which is a um, protective uh, coat that they used to put on firearms when they would pack them away after the after the uh, after they got out of military service, and it's very important to clean that out. Um, if it gets hot or anything, it'll cake on there and it'll turn into a hard tack. So we've generally gotten everything off of this firearm that's of concern to me. Again, you can definitely take this firearm down a little bit more deeply. Um, before I continue on though, I want to point out a few components, a few more components that I didn't earlier. And a lot of people wonder what the difference between a single action and a double action is. And you'll notice we were talking about in an earlier video what a sear is. A sear is a the component that will um, it engages the the hammer and the it locks the hammer and the trigger together um, until the moment that the sear will release the hammer or striker and uh, and and it continues on to its forward movement. Right here, uh, this is the sear surface of the the trigger, and then this and the single action sear surface, I should say, and the single action sear surface of the hammer is right here. Um, and in a single action, that's all you would have. But right here, this piece of metal, we have what we call the double action fly or double action sear, and that will. You, this little leg of the trigger will come move up push the hammer back or rotate the hammer back until it until this uh, this projection moves past that and it allows the the hammer to move forward so at this point we've cleaned everything up that I'm really concerned about um, we're gonna apply oil and then we're gonna reassemble the firearm as far as the inside and then we'll con we'll clean the rest of it as well. So it's very important to clean the grease and the carbon buildup that you that you can see but also be sure to be cleaning we'll get a clean uh, q-tip for this but clean the insides as well. So the inside of this yoke you want to clean that out. And you could also run a run a bronze brush through this if it's if it's very stubborn carbon. But if you guys are at all concerned about taking firearms apart, definitely I'm an advocate for using whatever resources you have. So any um, any manuals or anything like that, disassembly manuals, keep those on hand um, because you're gonna need them. It's very important to put things together right. Or if you have a firearm that's not in a, in a manual, as you take it apart, be sure to, uh, be sure to uh, take pictures so you can remember the orientation. Okay, so let's go ahead and oil. 
oil the parts. And for the inside components, I'm not gonna be using any grease. I'm gonna use a light oil to, uh, to maintain these components. Prevent rust. And the heavier you put the, put the oil, it's kind of a balancing act because the more oil will attract dirt and grime, but you also wanna put enough oil uh, that you'll, you are preventing rust or corrosion on the components. So, uh, another product that I do like is REM oil, which is, it can come into a, in an aerosol can which allows you to spray into little pieces of places. Okay, now we're gonna reassemble. So again, you're just starting in, re you're going in reverse order um, to reassemble the firearm. And before I do that, let me go ahead and oil this up, this yoke. Alrighty. All right, in here, you'll see in the side plate, I oriented all the screws and which, which place they go. We'll take those out so they don't fall on the floor, but keeping them in the order that they went in put them in a, a little bucket so that they're not gonna get lost. And you'll also notice that um, this in this slot, this is where the hammer block safety will ride inside here. So we also wanna oil that. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and clean it up. And then just a quick scrub on this should work. Might need to get a scraper out. What's nice about the Spartan systems too is you have this little rod, you have two sides where you can screw screw accessories into. So we have the pick on one side and then a the scraper on the other. Okay, drop the, the hammer block safety back on the rebound slide. And uh, that'll be an upward position. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of oil on this as well. And then reassemble. And for this reassembly, I'm again using the nylon side of the hammer so that I'm not uh, hurting the metal components and I'm just tapping around the edge to make sure everything goes down evenly. Before I put the, the grips back on and the screws in the, the, uh, the slide, I wanna double check everything's functioning properly. Check the single action, uh, double action, trigger pulls. Make sure the yoke is secure Again, the yoke will, will come out because I haven't put that screw in, but just make sure everything's locking up and it's, it's working properly. And everything seems to be functioning properly. So now I'll just reassemble with the screws. And again, you want to match your screws, your screw heads with the appropriate uh, screwdriver and just using finesse I'm gonna torque these screws down and not over tighten them but get them snug so when I'm reassembling I notice that these this screw and this screw have both the same head diameter and the same thread pitch so they would have worked both ways, but this, this has a flat head and this has a rounded head, which is more decorative. And this one's flat because of the way the grips are. It, it, you don't want a round head here. So that's how I can 
remember which orientation they belong in. And then we're gonna reassemble the grips. On these grips, we have two pins and we'll have a corresponding hole on either side of the grip so that they'll keep, keep together without rotating. So without dropping the, the pins out, I'll reassemble the grips onto the gun. Screw it down. And again, we're tightening it, but we're not over torquing it. Okay, so that's a fully assembled revolver again. We have the all the screws in place. The yoke is staying put. The cylinder's doing what it needs to do. Everything's locking up. Again, we're gonna give it another function check. And to really complete this, this uh, cleaning job, um, we would clean the, the bore, uh, the muzzle, the breech, the cylinders, the chambers um, to uh, give it a proper cleaning and that would be the detail clean. But that's beyond the scope of this, uh, this video and it's something that you'll learn at Sonoran Desert Institute. So we'll leave that for you when you come in and join us for classes. And um, if you like the content of this video, please be sure to like and subscribe uh, for more videos in the future. Um, and please visit us at sdi.edu um, for, a, for a description on our certificate program and associate's degree. We look forward to seeing you at SDI and welcome to the family.